Great. Well, I'm going to begin, Mandy, by asking what it was about this film and this character that initially appealed to you and wanted you, made, made you want to get involved. I needed a job. <laughs> well. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I did, no, I'm not kidding. I did need a job. Um, I really loved Tim's work. I loved his movie Pavilion. I thought it was so cool and loose and free and very um, beautifully shot. And the script was just very well written. The dialogue was very natural, which doesn't always happen when you read a script. It was just like ready to go. So I, I was into it. And also there was a yelling scene and I love to yell. You yelled really well, actually. Thank you. Mm. I, lo I love yelling. My husband always, when I get an audition where there's a yelling scene, he's like, you're going to get this. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of many people, but she was my favourite character in this. I think she's kind of compassionate and diligent, but she's very strong-willed, and he, wouldn't, he couldn't survive without her being by his side, I don't think, in terms of, in, in, well, in, when he's obviously sort of in the early stages yeah. of the film. It must be a great part to get your teeth into. There's so many nuances to this role. I love, thank you, that was really nice. Um, yeah, I really loved it. And also it was very easy. I think Coulson and I's natural dynamic is, is kind of like that. He's like a big, sweet, sensitive kid and you want to take care of him. And I, I, I don't know, I think I come off as steady. I'm not, I'm a very anxious wreck of a person, but I come off as very steady and in control. So our dynamic was already what our characters were. Did it, I mean, when acting opposite him, did it blur the line of reality and fiction for you? Because obviously he's playing a character on the page, but he's also playing a version of himself. So when you were sharing a scene, did it feel at times like, did you, was it hard to tell if you were sharing a scene with the real Coulson and the, the fictionalized version? Yeah. I think that's the great, one of the greater parts about the movie because it is him or a version of him, a past self and some current parts of himself that he doesn't love. And it was really interesting, like the yelling scene he really didn't want to do. Cause he was like, this is such an ugly past part of me. I don't want to do it. It feels too vulnerable. And it was so cool to do it with him because I don't know, Doing something that's so, so vulnerable, I think, can produce the best work. I don't know. It was special. And he radiates charisma. I mean, he was just, we just interviewed mm -hmm. him. And as an audience member, you can't take your eyes off him. Is it quite like that on set? Do you get a sense that everyone around the place is all yeah. just kind of transfixed by his presence? Well, he's also like a giant, you know? He's a giant and he has this like white blonde hair that like catches the light and he's always wearing like hot pink and has all these tattoos. So I think it's the rock star energy and mm -hmm. just his size. And Tim was saying that the character on the script was quite different to the one he'd written in the first place, because obviously Colson sort of brought so much of himself to the part. How was that for you? Were you almost having to adjust daily or on set? Because obviously what you might have prepared for in your head or envisaged in your mind, was, or was it different to the, to the kind of the character you were faced with when you were shooting? And, and was that quite a fun process to have that kind of, I don't know, authentic sort of play, I suppose? Yeah, Tim keeps things really, really loose. We improvised a lot and I would be like on a break somewhere, not in a scene. And he would be like, Maddie, come into this room. And he would just have me come into a room as the character. And we would have a conversation in a scene that's not at all in the script. Um, so I, I think that kind of set the tone for what we were doing. We were all just kind of going with the changes and I I also don't come into something thinking like oh this is who this is going to be and I'm going to be this way and I I try to just wait and see what the natural dynamic is I'm having a long answer <laughs> I promised short no. and I lied <laughs> I like long answers <laughs> I do um have you met many is it Alana's name it's Alana isn't it Alana. 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 Have you met many Alanas in your time through your work? I know maybe it's more of a music thing, maybe more of a rock star -y sort of, um, but, but you know, in, in, our, in this industry, with publicists and sort of people that work alongside the stars, have you encountered many people this like her? This is such a funny question. Oh, you're a I thought you were asking about the name. <laughs> oh, no. Have you ever met an Alana? Yeah. No, no, no. I meant 
as in people like that. Yeah, I think this industry is full of people like her because we're all just avoiding our own shit. And I think that's Alana's whole thing is that she is so focused on his side of the street. And her side of the street is a fucking wreck, but she doesn't have to look at it because his side is a wreck, but she can control this wreck without, you know, having to be working through her own emotional stuff. I think it's much easier in a way to take care of someone else than it is to take care of yourself. Yes, his crystal. Do you have anything, maybe a good luck charm or anything that you sort of, any, that thing that's sort of superstitious to you that you carry around or take to important auditions or anything? I don't know. This is going to be your first yes or no one. <laughs> <Just no. laughs> I'm trying to think. No, when I was 16, when I first started out, I had this stuffed animal. It's a stuffed cat that I had when I was a kid. And I would take it every time I flew on the plane from North Carolina to L.A. because I was scared of flying and still am. And I thought, like, if I have this with me, everything's going to be fine. But I don't have anything anymore. Uh, I don't know a, where that cat is. There's a suite called Wine Gums. Do you ever get Wine oh, Gums? Oh, yeah. So my mum used to give me them as a kid when I used to get on a plane. So now every time I get on a plane, I have to have Wine Gums or I think I'm yes. going to die. Yes. Yeah. And snacking helps. When there's turbulence, I have like eight snacks with me to just eat through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, coming up, is it Fixation is one you've got coming up? Fixation is a movie I have coming out, and then I'm going to do a... I don't know if I'm allowed to talk. I'm going to do a Netflix show in Montreal in a little bit. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, so we'll see if that's bad. But, <laughs> but Fixation looks quite... That looks really interesting. Have you shot that one? I yet? shot it, yeah. Mm. It was really fun to do. So how did you fit into that story? What's your, your character? Um, my character... Uh, is in a, a sort of insane asylum and she doesn't have a really good grip on reality and she may or may not have committed a murder and she can't piece together her memories as a sort of trauma response. And she's been there for a month and hasn't been eating. So to prepare for the first time ever, I did this like very methody thing where I like fasted and ran 10 miles a day and lost like 30 pounds and I was a nightmare <laughs> I wasn't my husband came with me to Canada and he was like okay okay <laughs> do you need anything no okay are there shouting scenes in the movie do you get to shout oh yeah oh good oh god I loved it shouting crying it was mainly shouting which you know <laughs> um, so my, my final question, because when Colson was saying before, he put so much of himself into this mm. project and of, you know, it, it's a very, let himself be so vulnerable on screen. I was wondering, would you, do you think you'd ever be able to put that much of yourself in a, in a sort of semi-autobiographical sense? Because I think it takes a, it's, it's a lot, it's quite courageous, isn't it, to, be, to, be, yeah. to bear yourself like that, I think, in, so publicly as he has done in this. I just wondered if that's is, is something you would ever do. Yeah, anything scary I would like to do. I think, again, that pr produces like the most interesting stuff is something, you know, that you're really, really scared of and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway and just see what happens. And like, you know, losing all that weight and crying and, and yelling every day and being miserable was scary. But it, I'm very, I, f I came home after work feeling very accomplished. I was physically miserable, but like creatively very <laughs> accomplished, which is all that matters. Yeah, I think so. Your well, health, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank your time. You. Good luck with your next project. Have you got your stuffed cat to take with you for that flight? No, I, uh, this shitty boyfriend I had, his stupid dog ate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!